it's been quite a weekend. <laughs> it's not really very often that the High Priestess of Bali, Indonesia, whisks through <laughs> the area. Um, so those of you who weren't here this weekend, Friday night or Saturday, um, you can feel the energy here. <laughs> can you not? You know, so you're still blessed by that. You're still blessed by the ceremony that took place here, the, the release, the beauty, you know, and, and if you've ever wanted to go to Bali and you haven't gotten to go there, you kind of went there <laughs> because you got the very essence of the devotion of what, what Bali is all about, that beautiful island that attracts so many from across the world, that devotion to spirit. And Ida's, um, you know, the Mulakot ceremony, the, the water ceremony is really a key part of her practice, of, of, of Bali too, but she does it in a, in a certain way that's a little bit different. But that um, energy that, that just sort of washed over us, right? And washed through this place. And then yesterday we had individuals who had the full ceremony. And, and then she walked around with me and blessed the rest of the property. So our property has been blessed and purified. <laughs> And you can really tune into that. It, when we get still, you can really tune into the fact that there's like, a, it's almost like a nest of peace has been left behind, you know? There's a sense of, of uh, rebirth and new possibility that comes from this place. Like we have left that past behind. Whatever, whatever was here that was no longer serving is now washed away. Can you feel that? That newness, that freshness, that, that kind of like new birth kind of experience that's here for us, that's available to us. It's that vibration of, of potentiality and possibility and full prosperity that we are opening to. So yay, God, yay, us. <laughs> you know, there is just a, there's a rebirth of our lives, a rebirth of ourselves, a rebirth of our community that feels really strong to me. And I'm just starting to land in the energy, so <laughs> there may be more for us to uncover as, as we go on. So, you know, when we have somebody come like that, you know, it's easy for us to get in guru mode and think like, oh, you know, I need to be by that person, I need to be near that person, I need to rub elbows with that person, I need to bask in that energy, and it's all about that person outside of us. And yes, absolutely, Ida embodies that divine feminine so beautifully and brings that energy that the world is just starving for in many ways, you know, and now in her first international tour, bringing that around the world, bringing that to us is a beautiful thing. And we honor that spiritual mastery. Of course, we're, we're attracted to that in different forms, however that shows up. In, in your life, people that you meet along the way. But it's also very easy to fall into that trap of, oh, it's out there. <laughs> you know, it's like the, the story, remember the story of the creatures? Um, I'm just launching into a story now, I'm not remembering the, the um, author. Mike, do you remember? Thank you very much, Richard Bach. I knew you'd referred to that story before. You know, and the creatures, they're, they're, the, the river's flowing, and, the, and there's one little, all the creatures, what they do, those particular creatures, is they cling. That's what they do in the river. They cling to the branches, and they cling to the, to the rocks. And there's one of that breed of creatures that says, you know, I'm going to let go. And they all say, oh, no, you can't let go. You won't be one of us. You know, this is what we do. This is how we belong. We cling to the, the we cling. This is what we do. We're clingers, you know, we're Klingons. <laughs> Those of you Star Trek fans, <laughs> mixing too many metaphors. <laughs> not working for you. <laughs> well, as a not so much Star Trek fan, I just could throw that in there. Um, but so the one creature just says, you know, you keep saying, oh, I'm going to let go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check this out. There's got to be more. There's got to be something downstream. I want to see it all. I want to live it all. And, you know, Ida actually, five years ago when I met her, talked about that. I want to see the world. I want to travel. I want to come to the U.S. sometime. You know, all these hopes and dreams. And they, to watch somebody bring, bring that energy, but also personally to have that experience, you know. And so the, the, the little guy that wants to let go, he finally lets go. And he's, he's, you know, oh my gosh, it's thrilling. At first he gets banged around by the rocks and the, you know, 
twigs and things. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea, you know? Anybody ever let go and then go, oh, wow, what was I thinking, you know? Life just got really crazy. But then he gets in the flow, right, as we do. And he's flowing down the river, and the other little creatures down the river see him coming by, and he's, he's like them, but he's flying, right? He's swimming. And they say, oh, the Messiah! <laughs> And he says, no, no, you too can do this. You can let go, you know. And of course, he's long gone. And <laughs> we're still, you know, the Messiah came once, you know. So, so it's that understanding that, yes, we honor the spiritual mastery, you know, the presence. I mean, I just feel so blessed to have the energy that we had here. And we have to know it's in us. We have to know that the people who who get it, who, who get evolved at a, at a certain level, that, that they're, they're here to show us the way, to remind us, to mirror that energy that we all have it in us. You know, Jesus tried to say it over and over again in a thousand different ways. And we might hear it intellectually, but we don't always like really ground that, you know, in us to know this truth, that, that we too are, have spiritual authority in us. We too have that divine mother, that divine feminine in us, male and female alike. We too have that sourced energy like mother nature and mother earth and mother ocean. We see that around us and then we can, we can really connect with it when we see it and feel it mirrored in us or even in the womb of us, you know, that creative space of us. So Ida and I were sitting at the table. I mean, it was just so lovely to have her like in our home and here in our space. And, and I said, you know, she's been gone from Bali many months. And I said, wow, you must really miss Bali. And she said, yeah, I do. I said, what do you miss the most? And she said, without skipping a beat, my mom. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. We all, you know, we all, we all love the mother, <laughs> even if it's not our, you know, even if we don't have that kind of relationship with our original uh, physical earthly mother, we all love the mother energy. We all sort of gravitate to that because origin and home and mother are all one. You know, that divine source is, is that mother source, that creative source, that nurturing, safe, comfortable. It's the place where we go home and we rest in that, that nest and we say, ah, oh, I'm finally back, return to the land of my soul, you know. I'm completely myself, completely at ease. That's the place where we regenerate, where we rejuvenate, where we rebirth ourselves. And so it is within that, of course, we get that. And it's also without. It's also looking around the world and finding and resonating with those places and those people that mirror that truth for us, remind us of who we are. So then we don't have to cling and look for and say, oh, it's out there and be like the little creatures saying, oh, the Messiah. But instead to recognize, no, we too can let go of whatever it is that blocks our way from knowing who we are, from remembering the truth of who we are. Whatever it is that says, I'm not good enough, I'm too, you know, the smallness of life that we, the, those messages that we take on, you know, are shed then. And for some of us, we maybe even caught those messages from our own earthly mothers. And so there, there's, a, there's work to be done there through the pathway of mother that can open us to the source of mother, to the divine sense and femininity that is called for on the planet now that has been so out of balance for so long. And again, it's not about being in female form. So I want the men to really get it, that that feminine energy is yours as much as it is a, a woman's energy. You know, it's that holistic energy. It's that we all come from the mother, right? So we all have that connection. There were two twins that um, came into the world. This is called the parable of the twins. And I'm gonna mostly read it because um, I like the way it's worded and it's got a lot of dialogue. Once upon a time, twins were conceived in the same womb. Weeks passed and the twins developed, and as their awareness grew, they laughed for joy. Isn't it great that we were conceived? Isn't it great to be alive? 
Together, the twins explored their world. When they found their mother's cord that gave them life, they sang for joy. How great is our mother's love that she shares her own life with us. As the weeks turned into months, the twins noticed how much each of them were changing. What does it mean, asked the one. It means that our stay in this world is drawing to an end, said the other. But maybe there's life after birth. <laughs> but how can it be, responded the one. We will shed our life cord, and how is it possible to live without it? Besides, we have seen evidence that others have been here and none of them have returned. <laughs> they haven't come back to tell us that there is life after birth. Nope, this is the end. And so the one fell into a deep despair and said, if conception ends at birth, what is the purpose of the womb? It's meaningless. Maybe there's no mother after all. But there has to be, persisted the other. How else could we get here? How could we remain alive? Have you seen our mother, said the other one? <laughs> Maybe she only lives in our minds. Maybe we made her up because the idea made us feel good. And so the last days in the womb were filled with deep questioning and fear. And finally, the moment of birth arrived. And when the twins passed from their world, they opened their eyes and they cried for joy. For what they saw exceeded their fondest dreams. And that is birth on earth. So we may think about some heavenly place, but it is here. <laughs> and wherever those other dimensions are. It's a both and, isn't it? So our work then, or our play, our joy, is to recognize and to remember from where we came. And to not have that in the process of recognizing, to be able to shed that fear and that disbelief that the one twin seemed to keep experiencing. Leanna Silver says in her book, Feminine Genius, fiercely embodying the sacred feminine is a process of coming home and as well becoming home. So it's a coming home, but it's also a becoming home. You know? The day before Ida and her entourage arrived at our home, uh, an interesting thing happened. I was over here at the office. Brenly was home. You know, it's that... Martha Mary thing, you know, we were doing the Martha thing, you know, cleaning up the house, preparing food, getting ready, you know. And um, she calls and she says, oh, there's a mother duckling and 11 little, you know, uh, ducklings, or mother duck and 11 little ducklings walking around in the yard and chaos, our dog is going crazy and call Lindsay Wildlife, I don't know what to do. So I called Lindsay Wildlife and they gave us the, the scoop on what you're supposed to do. And, and the woman said, they hatched in your yard today. And I said, oh, that's not possible because we would have seen them and we have a dog. And she goes, oh no, they're very good at hiding. And um, so we think actually they, they hatched on the side of the house and came through the fence. But anyway, so she's the 11 little ducklings, which is also a sacred number, you know. And so she said, you just open the gate and they'll go and find water because that's home, right? That's their, their new home. So they'll go and naturally find their new home and she will guide the way. And she said, it might take a while. So we open the gate and, and, and of course I was over here and Felicia was here and Mike was here. And so we all wanted to be part of the fun. <laughs> so we all went and within about five minutes out, she was going that, you know, you know, not clucking, but, you know, talking, quacking, I guess, at her little ducklings, keeping them in a row. And they went all along the fence through the brush. And then they, and then she started moving really fast. We couldn't even keep up, but we wanted to be sure they didn't cross the road, you know? And so they get around and they're, they're, you know, we know the canal's over here. So we're like, okay, stay on this side of the road, you know, just a little, you're almost there. You're going to get there, you know? It was so sweet to watch her just lining them up. I mean, um, imagine, you know, 11 children, right? <laughs> newborns. 11 newborns suddenly you've got to take care of. And so they're, they're, um, 
They come across, and then she starts heading across Geary Road. So Brenly's on one side, stopping traffic. Felicia's on the other side. Mike and I are just holding space, you know? Like the, the four mothers joining the mother duckling, you know, or the mother duck. And then sometimes the mother duckling forgets the person from Lindsay told me that, that how small her babies are. And so she'll do things that they can't do. And so she goes up on this high curb and all the little ducklings are just like looking, you know? <laughs> so she's quacking at them to get in line to get to the place where, and then off to the canal they safely went. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> the end. <laughs> But you know, it was to participate in that energy is so life-giving. And we all got to be mothers. We all got to support mom, you know? We all got to, you know, if you saw a woman crossing the road with 11 newborns, <laughs> right? You'd be in a hurry to get out there and make sure, to, or 11 toddlers, let's say, you know, walking on their own two feet. You'd be sure to be out there and directing traffic, right, and, and ushering them home, ushering them to safety, to water. It just was that all the symbology is so interesting to me. You know, here comes the priestess with her water to our home, and, and it's the first day we've seen a duck in our yard, and of course, 11, a sacred number of little ducklings, and you know, they're honing in on the water to find their home, and oh, I could go on, it's so rich and juicy. <laughs> But it's just that, that reminder that we are, um, we, are the, the, we are the ducklings and we are the mama duck and we are the witness, the bystanders, the protective energy, the guides, and all of it is love. You know, all of it is mother love. It's that that we long for, isn't it? That mother love. Don't we all long for that mother love? To be back in that sense of, just completely cradled, swaddled, and taken care of. You know, one of the things I do to help me reach people and, and to get past my own ego stuff is if I'm having a little bit of a resistance to an adult, I, I will just see them as a child. <laughs> and it just immediately brings me into that innocence, you know, that innocent one that's standing there before me. <laughs> and it's a completely different than, you know, it's, everything falls away. <laughs> And we get back to that mother energy that says, yes, I am both mother and child. We are both coming home and becoming home. That mother duck was home to her children and taking them home. And so there is both a, there's a constant understanding of coming in and getting refilled, sitting on the lap of the divine, getting resourced, and also offering that to the world as our mother love. And so both are true and both are important aspects of our processing of this coming home. So in the world we find places, you know, mother as place, divine earth, you know, mother earth, mother nature, mother ocean, mother being embodied in any one of us. But it's this place within that's key. In, you know, and even in fierce arenas, violent arenas, there is this sense of coming home. In bullfighting, there is a term called carencia. I may be saying it incorrectly. Um, but it's where the bull in the ring finds its place where it feels at ease. And every bull has a different place in the ring that it is its carencia. Whenever I do a house blessing, the first thing I ask a person is, where is your power spot in your home? And without you know, question, every person I've asked this knows immediately. Because we know that place, you know, that we have that sense of place, that sense of grounding, that sense of power and peace. And so the bull knows and to where to find it, and it's the matador's work to distract the bull so it doesn't find that place. <laughs> because once it finds that place, it's gonna get sourced with all of its power. <laughs> And that's the same for us. 
Once we find that place within, it's a place we return to again and again and again, and it's the source. It's the place where we get full, filled up with power. That is the truth of who we are. It's a place where we return to the land of the soul and we remember who we are. It's the, the womb within us, again, male or female, that place of creative juice, of the place that, that helps us remember and get grounded and then co-create out into the world from there. And so the bull is doing all of that when it finds its carencia. And it stands in that place and it gets grounded in that place and it gets its power back. And so the matador you could think of as sort of the, the distractions of the world, right? The egoic things that get us off track that we forget and, and we you know, get distracted from our power spot. We get distracted from our place of deep peace, from that well of prayer. We forget to, to go to it even after a while. We get so distracted, we forget we even have it in the ring of life, that we even have that place that we go to. And that place, yes, it can be an outer place, and that's wonderful to have those outer places, those altars in the world, the places where you just feel like, oh, I am one with everything when I am wherever, fill in the blank, <laughs> whatever that is. But it's, it's key to know that that is a reflection again of, of the place inside. You know, the bull, there's, it's not so much magic to the place where the bull's four hooves are standing, but it is the magic of what it brings on the inside, that grounding that sense of, of knowing and remembering who we are, back to the origin, back to the source of love, back to the source of power. So Rachel Naomi uh, Raymond is the one who I learned this concept about the bullfighting. And she said that um, there's, she does these meditations, she's a medical doctor, and she does um, meditations with her patients. And she said she always starts out with find, a safe, find your safe place. You know, she said one of her patients said, I can never do that exercise. Like, I can never find a place. He said, I never, I never got into that exercise. I couldn't find anywhere. He said, I looked everywhere. I imagined myself in my home. I imagined myself trout fishing, he said. I imagined myself at the head of my boardroom, and I imagined myself in my workplace and creating, but nothing helped. I couldn't find my safe place, he said. And then he said, I've been doing this all my life, you know, looking for my safe place, looking for my grounding, looking for my carencia, if you will, my place where I could get sourced and remember again who I am. And he said, in the end, I imagined myself as a little boy in my mother's arms. And that worked. And he said that after a while, I felt safe. And I suddenly knew that the arms around me were not my mother's arms, but they were my own arms. And there was a sense of safety inside of me. And it's not outside, he said, where I've been looking all my life and my achievements and the places that I've been, but it's inside me. That's why I never looked before. And then Rachel goes on to say, in working with people with cancer, she's seen the change that happens in them when they find their carencia. In full view of the matador, they are calm and peaceful, wise. And they have gathered their strength around them. And the inner silence then is the most secure place, the most healing place they could find. So we're all, you know, and, and it's not like a, some kind of riddle, you know? This is, it, we make it really difficult, don't we? It's, it's like we make this whole spiritual journey like this crazy riddle, and there is mystique, and there's mystery, and that's lovely, but there's also simplicity, you know, like a breath. Ha! Ah. <laughs> I feel my heart again. I feel the, the rhythm of my heart. I feel the breath through my heart. Oh, yeah, a little bit deeper. I even feel that place of power and creation. And there you are in it. You're standing in it. You're sourced in it. You're back home. You're in your mother's arms. And then you realize, oh, the arms are my own loving mother arms. So there's always that place that is available to us. It's not, it is a mystery, but it's also a very simple practice, a very simple process that we return home to the mother.
Hafiz, the poet, said, the place you are right now, God circled on a map for you. <laughs> and so that place, of course, is place, this sense of place, right? But it's also this place, this place, this here and now. You know, yesterday, I was um, chopping more food, more vegetables, more fruit. You know, we did a lot of that. And I was thinking, ah, oh, I haven't gotten to my talk yet. Should I be doing that? I was just checking in. I was like, no, I really want to be just chopping food, you know? I just, I'm here now. This is what I want to be doing. And then we had that water blessing ceremony. And after I was here for a while, I thought, well, maybe I should go home. And I was like, no, I want to be here now. I mean, the high priestess of Bali is here, you know? And people are having deep healing experiences. And I was able to hold space for that and just be 100% fully present in the now. That is such a gift when we go there. And again, no big riddle. You know, you just shift. <laughs> you just stop the madness, you know? Stop looking at the matador and find your spot. And just, yeah, and rest there. So this energy now that has been cleared and cleansed here and blessed, our whole property blessed, it's like there's just this sort of, I just have this image of this big nest of peace that's been created, you know? And it's like out of this, we become the, the fledglings. We become the ones who, who enter into the world with this memory, this knowing, this essence of the feminine that we are and that the feminine that the world needs. And we bring that with such a, an ease and a grace now. Rachel Naomi tells another story in her book about a, a colleague of hers who was um, seeing this, this um, homeless woman would come to see him on a, a particular Wednesday every month. And he, without fail, she would come, and without fail, he would be there for her. And it was a, quite an effort for her to get to the office. She would take a shopping cart. She, well, all of her possessions were in two shopping carts. And it was a steep hill that she had to go to go to his office. So she would take a shopping cart and she would take it to a parking meter and take a sash and tie it up. And then she'd take her next cart and she'd do the same and tie it up. And then she'd undo this one and bring it to the next meter and so on to get all the way up the hill to see him. And then in she would come and they said he treated her with such utmost, like just the same love and respect he treated all of his patients. You know, she was kind of smelly, and her clothes were smelly, and she rambled and didn't seem to make a lot of sense, and it didn't matter. He always treated her with this kind of care. And so sometimes she would show up on days that she wasn't appointed to be there, and the staff thought she was confused, and they would try to tell her, oh, he's not here today, you know, and she would go back to that same consulting room where she would meet with him, and she would just stand in the doorway and put her right foot in and then take it out and put her foot back in and take it out. And she would do this several times and then she would leave. So there's that, that meeting place, you know? It's that, that place, that sense of place of, of the divine where we are met with that kind of mother love, that kind of sense of welcome and respect and kindness. Yes, we find it in the world and yes, we must find it in ourselves. And so the, the things that we are drawn to in the world will help us, but we can't give our power over to it. That's the key. So it's like we can draw all that goodness in and around us and be around it and, and learn from it, be helped by each other and be the people who stand on the side of the road and hold space and the people right out in the middle of the traffic who, who stop traffic, you know, for, for the, the love of humanity, for the love of, of life on earth that is so precious. We have been entrusted as the mothers of life on earth. And so that deep trust that has been given us as the gift from the Divine Mother is something not to squander, not to lose sight of, not to hide from, but to step into with our spiritual authority that has already been given to us, to find that sweet spot Gregory Kramer, the insight dialogue teacher, said, you know, he's practices lots of insight meditation, of course, and he said he always has this, when he sits to meditate, this time of just sort of kind of moving around a little bit until he finds that spot, and then it's like, oh yeah, there it is, you know? 
And I kind of do that sometimes too. I don't know if you do that too, but there's just sort of that kind of, we have to be aware that we're looking for the spot, first of all. <laughs> we have to want to look for the spot. But then we find it and we go, oh yeah, there it is. So we drop in there and there it is. You know, there it is back to the cradle. There it is back to the womb. There it is back to before the womb. There it is back to the love, the unconditional love, the mother love, the essence of nurturing and kindness and protection. And yes, even fierceness, even the kind of fierceness and the kind of violence that, that something like a bullfight represents. Even that the mother is there inside the bull, even inside the matador inside the crowd. It's all there to be accessed. It's just that we forget, we get distracted. We grab onto other things. But those other things are phew, sand, <laughs> you know? So it was just stop grabbing for the sand and grab for the real thing. <laughs> and there we find everything. There we return to the source of all love. And everything we need fills us up again. And then, once we are filled up to the brim and overflowing with divine love, it's so easy to share it with the world. It's so easy to be then the birther of that energy in the world, to send it out in every direction, to, to be fully present to whatever is in front of us with great love, with great attention, great sense of service. There's nothing like that time when we fall into the presence, when we fall into the now. And then it's, we realize, ah, I'm here exactly where I need to be. You are exactly where you need to be right now. We get so stuck in calendar time that it just, you know, it just sort of wears us down, doesn't it? But when we are in Kairos time, where now is now is the ever-present now, we can be fully here, fully present to one another, fully present to the love. And then there's that sense of safety and that sense of, you know, the stuff just gets washed away in the holy water, you know, and is left behind. And then here we are, open, receptive, a vessel, a channel. The Divine Mother embodied ourselves. Certainly the world is grateful when we awaken to this, right? Even if they don't know it. <laughs> You know, even if somebody doesn't know the energy that you're bringing, there's a, there's a little bit of an inkling of something shifts for everyone, and it can be incremental. But that something shifts and something shifts and something shifts, and pretty soon they realize, oh, and then there's somewhere where I can find that myself inside of me. I don't have to just keep blaming my mother for all the things she didn't do for me. It turns out that I've got it in me. It turns out that I can be the divine mother that mothers myself, that brings myself home, and then I can become that mother in the world. Yes, we can. I, dare I say we should. <laughs> I want us to, <laughs> all of us, you know? When we touch those magical moments, when we get into those spaces, we know that's the real deal. That's home. That's heaven on earth. That's the truth. That's the real dream, not the, all the stuff we make up that is distraction to that real dream. <sighs> In Animal Speak, the book Ted Andrews tells about the different animals and what they represent. And he said that the duck is emotional comfort and protection and that they have a gift for returning to the place where they feel comfortable and safe. Isn't that lovely? And so the duck brings us the gift of remembering, this is where I'm home. This is where I'm comfortable. This is where I'm safe. I hope this is where you're home. This is where you're comfortable. This is where you're safe. Because when we all come to that spot, when we all begin to touch into that spot and create a power spot out of this very sanctuary, then from there we get to really do our work in really high levels of exponential power put into the world, of exponential unconditional love poured out into the world. It's here for us. It's available to us. It's here now in this moment. It's available. It's a breath. If you don't feel it, it's a breath away. It's a heartbeat away. 
Find your spot. <laughs> Let's take a moment to do that. Let's pray together. And so as we enter the space of our hearts, this container, this place of, of everything, the birthing place, or maybe even deeper into your body, you go into that place that's like the womb, the place of, of solar plexus, or even deeper into your body, or into that space that we know is beyond body, that the body is just a kind of a facade, even though it is a temple, it is also kind of a facade. And so there is this sense of a reality, a realness that we enter when we breathe into that space. When we breathe in and we return to that space, like the, the lap of the Divine Mother, but even beyond that, we are that. And so we become one with this energy of infinite love, the kind of love that makes you feel so safe that you can lay it all down, that you can let the tears flow and be rocked back into wholeness, be rocked back into the truth of who you are, be rocked back so that you, like one of those twins, can be birthed into this world, be birthed once again, rebirthed once again. And that when you open your eyes, when you come back to, when you remember who you are, and you open your inner eyes and then your outer eyes, and you look around and you realize with exceeding joy that this is beyond your wildest dreams. That this place called Earth is beyond your wildest dreams. And that you as the Divine Mother are in co-creation, in constant co-creation of making a new world wherever you see something other than love, other than light. Thank you, God for reminding us, for bringing us together again and again and again so that we can release whatever needs to be released and we can take hold and remember once again who we are sourced from the essence of the creator and moving forth to midwife into the world, whatever our highest desires are, whatever is most needed right now. Thank you, God, for the humble ability to be a channel, a womb for the world. And so it is.